See, I'm so used to going, dealing with grown men and grown women, and you know, and lately I've been dealing with the elderly and all that. This is such a blessing, you know, because I, I usually bring words of uh, what I'm going through, and I write that way. Over this year, uh, dealing with the elderly, and this is the first time, and I thank God for this, that I had a youth setting, and he's giving me words of joy. Because I'm always so used to bringing correction and coming at people. Because remember who I deal with in ministry. I deal with mentally ill people. I deal with people who had addiction problems, whether it be alcohol, drugs, or whatever. And I've been learning now that even they ain't the real worst addictions. You know what the worst addictions there are out there? Sexual. I deal with men who have sexual addictions that are way beyond anybody who does crack, heroin, marijuana. That is a hard one. It is a hard demon to break. And they think they're all right. They think they're better than the person who drinks. They think they're better than the person who do drugs. They don't know. They're addicted beyond, I mean, that is a heavy demon. And some of them, we can't cast out. You know why? Because if the person don't want to let it go, we can't cast it. Ain't that what Jesus always told us? By your faith. By your faith. I can cast out all day long. I watch people wiggle on the ground. I heard the demon speak. I ain't coming out. Scared me half to death. Now, I'm black. I, I, when I went home, they said I look white. That's the first time I ever had a demon talk. I'm like, Lord, I'm out. <laughs> you know? But it was helping me grow. You know? that was That's an experience you have to have. But I recognized that that person did not want that demon out. And we, you know, I had the minister. They was calling it out, screaming it out, and yelling it out. That person got right back up with it. That's why some people go right to the altar on Sunday and pick up the demon and walk out and come right back with the same demon again on Monday. No big deal. Because you have to want to release it. You have to make a choice that I don't want this thing anymore. And when you make up your mind, see, you know what I found out? Can I go here? Thank you, Lord. He's changing me. Can we go to uh, 2 Corinthians, please? Second Corinthians, thank you, Father. Amen. Second Corinthians 2. See, I ask God in my addiction and in all my sinful ways, Father, why do I keep confessing these things over and over? My pastor told me to keep confessing. I said, but I'm getting tired of hearing the same confession. What do I do? He said, just keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. But I'm getting sick of it. I know God is getting sick of it. Then I begin to profess those famous scriptures. He who shall deliver will deliver and will deliver. Amen. Y'all know that? Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 2. So I say, God, what is true deliverance? But when I did finally get delivered, he had told me, brother, you're going to go to hell. Now, I'm born again. And he's telling me, you're going to go to hell because you're in denial. You've been lying to me. That's how God talks to me. And he knows he had to come at me that way because I'm prideful, stubborn, and egotistical. So God comes straight at you. He does with me. You can't really go to hell unless you straighten up. So that's when I got honest with him because I sure enough did.